Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. If you want to do some raw editing with your shiny new iPad for this Christmas and beyond, this video is for you as today we will be talking about the top apps for raw editing on the iPad. As the iPad has become more and more powerful, more and more iPad apps than ever before offer the ability to import and edit raw files sharing the same powerful features as desktop editing software. This is exciting indeed, as with the speed and portability of the iPad, coupled with the Apple Pencil, the iPad now offers a faster, more intuitive way to edit your raw photos. So before we go to the list, let's run through the criteria for judging. The first criteria is the quality of raw processing. Adjustments should look pleasing out of the box, target the right tones, and work quickly. Second, local adjustments capability. The editor should support making adjustments on parts of an image, not just the whole image. Third is the quality of the UI. The design of the user interface should be optimized for the iPad screen, including its widgets, text sizes, and layout. Fourth is other features. We will consider any other feature that improves the raw editing experience, including photo management, noise reduction, and others. For this year, price will not be a factor in this ranking. We will also just focus purely on raw images and raw processing. We will not be considering JPEG performance in the criteria. So without further delay, let's count down the best raw editing apps for the iPad. At number four is Affinity Photo 2, which costs 40 US dollars. Affinity Photo is one of the very first iPad raw editors to come out. The original Affinity for the iPad was launched in 2017 and its first major update, version 2.0, was released just this past November. So how did Affinity Photo make it to the top editor's list? Well, it includes a fast and fluid interface which supports smooth panning, scrolling, and zooming. Affinity Photo is packed with features mirroring its desktop counterpart's capabilities. It includes a Lightroom-like raw processor called Develop Persona and a Photoshop-like layered editor called Photo Persona, all in one app. Affinity Photo offers excellent raw processing. It targets the right tones properly. It possesses top-notch clarity adjustment, which look pleasing out of the box. It also has great lens correction, which is unique among iPad apps. Its noise reduction is pretty good too. It supports local adjustments in both Develop Persona and Photo Persona though its masking brush in Develop Persona doesn't have edge detection on the iPad. In the latest version, Affinity Photo 2, Affinity Photo now includes luminosity masks and hue range masks, which make it even easier to create precise masks. The functionality of this masking matches the desktop persona pretty much exactly. So what are the drawbacks of Affinity Photo? The limitations are mostly in its developed persona, which is responsible for raw processing. First, it has limited dynamic range. For example, when doing local adjustments, I find that Affinity has problems brightening very dark shadows. Also, you can't apply a clarity adjustment on a specific part of an image, nor does it have support for selective color adjustment. To be fair, you could have this functionality by navigating to Photo Persona, but that would take much more time, effort, and complexity to do so. Affinity Photo also has limited tools, such as it doesn't have a haze adjustment like every other raw editor. Finally, if you're just interested in raw editing, Affinity has a more complicated interface and navigation. At number three is Capture One for the iPad. Capture One costs five US dollars a month subscription. So how is Capture One better than Affinity Photo? Well, Capture One has better raw processing than Affinity. 
In fact, I think its raw processing is the best out there in that its tone adjustments produces the best color and detail and its other numerous features also work pretty effectively. Capture One also has more targeted adjustments. It reveals shadows and blacks detail better than its competitors. Unlike Affinity, Capture One supports both a dehaze adjustment and photo management. In its photo management module, you can create albums and even drag and drop photos to albums. Capture One also supports star ratings and color ratings. You can also search for photos with a particular rating or file name. Capture One's interface is snappy and compared to Affinity, much more intuitive and easy to learn. So with all those good characteristics, why is it only at number three? Well, Capture One for the iPad is a first version and the development team did admit to releasing an unfinished product. And it is glaringly missing some important features. The most important is no local adjustment support at all. So you're stuck with global adjustments. It also has no object removal and no curves tool. Bottom line is, despite being a solid first effort, its lack of local adjustments keeps Capture One for the iPad at number three. At number two is On One Mobile. On One Mobile is free, but without local adjustment support. If you want to unlock its complete feature set, On One Photo Raw costs 99 US dollars, which includes the desktop and the mobile app. So why is On One ahead of Capture One? Well, it has local adjustment support and a very capable one at that. On One is the only iPad app which supports edge detection, and in my tests, it works pretty well. Aside from its local adjustment support, its general global adjustments are very good, and they include its shadows, highlights, structure, dehaze, are all quite competent. The shadows adjustment also has great dynamic range and has the ability to brighten even very dark areas. Its local adjustment support also extends to its filters, which include curves, dynamic contrast, and selective color, which even Lightroom doesn't support local adjustments for its selective color. On One supports mask operations as well, meaning you can copy and paste masks between layers, and inverting masks is also supported. So what are the drawbacks of On One Photo Raw? Well, On One's interface is more sluggish than others and crashes more often than its competitors in my test. It also strangely does not support zooming in local adjustments, which is extremely limiting to its usability. It also lacks perspective correction, except for straightening. Bottom line is, On One's strong feature set and capable adjustments is let down by its sluggish and buggy interface. And that brings us to number one, Lightroom Mobile. Lightroom costs 100 US dollars a year, subscription only, and that includes the desktop and mobile app. So why is Lightroom at number one? Well, it starts off with its top quality raw processing, which is comparable to Capture One in quality and quantity. Its light panel delivers pleasing results across the board in its tonal and color adjustments. Whether it be shadows, highlights, clarity, texture, dehaze or denoise, you name it, Lightroom's adjustments are extremely competent, natural looking, and just work. Aside from quality tone adjustments, the biggest differentiator of Lightroom is the quality of its local adjustments. It is the only iPad app which supports AI-powered masking and it uses AI to automatically the sky or the subject. A real time saver as it reduces all the brushing you need to do, which can be very error prone and time consuming, especially if the brush has no edge detection, which Lightroom also does not have. Not only are its AI masks more accurate than the competition, 
the AI mask works well with its masking brush, which you can use to refine the AI mask further. Just like on one, Lightroom supports masking operations, which allow you to copy masks between layers and invert masks, which is a real time saver, especially in images like the one you're seeing on the screen, where you can just invert the already selected mask from the foreground and put it at the background and vice versa. Lightroom in my tests as well has the best object removal tool in this list, which is characterized by very little lag and smooth operation. Every other raw editor I tested was laggy when you move the selections around when performing object removal. It is also useful to point out that Lightroom had the smoothest interface in general in this list. If that's not enough, Lightroom also has the most complete photo management feature of any iPad app. It supports album creation, photo ratings, search, and its photo search is the most comprehensive on this list. It supports the most criteria, and you can specify whether to search for camera, lens, rating, file type, and more. Very impressive for an iPad app. Bottom line is, if it sounds like Lightroom's iPad app blows out the competition, it does. Lightroom Mobile was launched in 2017 and was one of the first iPad raw editor apps. Its multi-year head start shows in both the quality and quantity of its features. So there you have it, the best iPad apps for 2022. I hope you found this video helpful. Do you agree or disagree? I'd love to hear from you. Congratulations to all the iPad editors who made it into the list. I can't wait for whatever they have in store for 2023. If you have a favorite iPad editor, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you'd like to help out the channel, I'd really appreciate if you can subscribe, like, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.